coming up, let's talk you and serious towing. This is so much more complex than just taking a baby box trailer to the tip. The details really matter if you want to avoid getting yourself on the nightly network news. John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Australian new car buyers save thousands off their brand new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. There's no doubt about it, towing a big heavy trailer, particularly in an urban environment like this on an arterial road with reasonably narrow lanes and crazy trucks screaming past, can be quite demanding, you know. You've got to have this continuously updated picture in your head of what's going on around you at all times. And you've got to solve all the problems down there when you're back here. So you've got to be way ahead of the curve when you're towing this stuff. But a lot of people think that the heavy towing equation plays out in the driver's seat or it starts from the driver's seat when in fact you've got to get everything right way back there or it can end really really badly. We'll get back out on the road in just a sec, but first I need to detain you briefly with the basics. Heavy towing actually starts with the trailer and vehicle configurations and you need to get them right. You must conform to the numerous load limits and you need to optimize your particular setup for dynamic stability. This is a really specialist thing too, so get expert help if you need it. Don't wing it. At the very least, your trailer in its most heavily loaded configuration needs to conform to its own maximum load capacity. That's called the ATM or Aggregate Trailer Mass Limit. It also needs to come in under the vehicle's maximum tow capacity and the maximum static tow ball download capacity of your vehicle. There's also the gross combination mass limit, that's called the GCM, which is the total combined weight of both the loaded trailer and your loaded vehicle. And then there's the gross vehicle mass limit, the GVM, which is the total loaded weight of the tow vehicle, including the passengers, the luggage, the equipment, the accessories, and the tow ball download. Don't overlook that, okay? Tow ball download is definitely part of the GVM. And this is a lot of complex stuff to get right when you think about it, if you are not a technically trained person. You need to measure these loads too, using a weigh bridge. Pro tip, do not guess, measure it. Overloading any aspect of your setup is dangerous, illegal, it's negligent, and let's not forget it's pretty stupid. And if you get stopped and weighed out there in the Great Shitsvillian outback and you're found to be overloaded, at the very least there's going to be a fine coming your way and you won't be proceeding inconveniently. And if you crash while you're overloaded and they figure that out subsequently, your insurance company might make making a claim very difficult indeed. And once you tick all of these compliance boxes, you've then got to get all the pesky little details right. Docking procedures are virtually idiot-proof in a Santa Fe. The reversing camera has a clever inbuilt mode that displays trailer docking dynamic guidelines which move with the steering. So lining up the ball and the hitch is a total no-brainer. Then you jump out, you hook up, you get the main handle locked down on top of the ball and you do that immediately because it's easy to forget and kind of embarrassing if you do out there on the road. So lock it down as a priority. Next, there's two safety chains for heavy trailers. You cross them over diagonally. The left chain goes on the right tow bar anchor point and vice versa. Make sure you use load rated shackles, okay? They're the ones with the yellow pins. If your trailer has breakaway protection designed to apply the brakes if the whole thing suddenly parts company, make sure you clip the end of the lanyard to the tow bar and not the chain. 
Make friends with your tyre gauge too, because here there are no less than 10 tyres to pressure check. Do not skip this step because underinflation is the most common cause of blowouts. Also obvious, but a lot of people don't bother, check all the lights, especially the indicators and the brakes on the trailer. And make sure you secure the load, if it's a boat or a car or bikes or a bobcat, whatever. You do not want that load moving in transit or coming completely unglued during a swerve or emergency brake application. It also doesn't hurt either to double check all of this setup stuff before you set off or have a second person review your setup just to make sure you're not about to score an epic own goal because you had brain fade or a senior moment. So we just climbed about we just climbed about 180 meters of vertical height from the river just down there to this spot and that's a great test of the power train. We did it twice in filming this segment, once on the freeway just over here and once on the old road over here so at 110 and 80. And the power train's gone really well, but that's only part of the towing equation. There's actually another two parts, right? there's part of the vehicle and part of you. So let's talk about them in order because the vehicle's really important. You know, when you're towing at pretty much the maximum towing capacity for a vehicle, you are intrinsically closer to the limits of the handling control envelope. And it's very easy to step over the line. And if you do that, it's really hard to recover. Here's a guy finding both these things out the hard way, okay? He's discovering how intrinsically close he's been driving vis-a-vis -vis the edge of the control envelope, and once he jumps over that particular cliff, he's discovering how impossible it is to recover control. Do not let this happen to you. It's worth remembering that all our hero did here was overtake a little bit aggressively, and physics did the rest. And it probably all felt fine, right up to the point where it really didn't, and by then, it's all over. There's a line, okay, and you are driving close to it when you tow, but you cannot feel or see it. So there's that. So when I say drive conservatively, this kind of thing is what I'm trying to avoid because when you're towing, you are closer to losing control of the vehicle than you are ever in ordinary driving. But that's not the only problem. Sometimes it's hard enough just fitting in. The trailer is so wide and it's so heavy and it has such an impact on the car and you've got to be on it all the time. You've got to be aware of that extra width and you've got to drive conservatively. You've got to leave much longer safety margins between you and the vehicle in front. And you've got to know what's behind you and what's to the side at all times. And you've got to fit into what is effectively very narrow lanes indeed. Not so much out there on the freeway, but particularly when you're driving around the suburbs on arterial roads that have been widened and widened and widened and the lanes are really narrow and then you've got to come to grips with roundabouts and all that kind of stuff. My strong advice is drive a lot more conservatively than you believe to be absolutely necessary. If you think you're driving a bit too conservatively, you've probably got it pretty right because you never know when some malignant influence is going to militate against you out there in traffic. As for driving techniques, you'll want to turn wide and late. In other words, start left turns on the right edge of the lane and vice versa. And commence the turn after the rear axle of the tow vehicle passes the intersection. 
on curves, remain out wide and turn in relatively late. Use the mirrors to monitor how well the trailer is maintaining lane discipline and adjust accordingly. If you're traveling on three lane arterial roads, stick to the middle lane where you can and remain dropped back from the vehicle in front no matter how many times you get carved up in traffic. It's gonna happen. If you're driving a manual transmission, do not strain the gearbox in too high a gear. Like, don't make it lug in fifth or sixth uphill. That's actually a great way to overstress the transmission and turn a perfectly serviceable gear train into expensive shrapnel. And if you're driving an auto, for Christ's sake, leave it in D. It's programmed to make damage-proof gear selection choices. And you're probably not as good at this as the computer, okay? So don't try to be. Pro tip, autos are even more expensive to repair. You've been warned. This is actually a very serious tow test for this vehicle. The Santa Fe's maximum tow capacity is 2,000 kilos, and the i30 Fastback N here, it weighs 1,470. When you add the 500 kilos for the trailer, 1,970, we're within 30 kilos of the limit, which is pretty close. And I'd suggest in practice, if you can come in at 20% under the limit for your vehicle, that's probably the sweet spot because it'll give the powertrain more leeway and it'll also give you more flexibility in terms of whatever gear you might have inside the boat or the car or the caravan, whatever it is that you're towing. The other thing that makes this particular Santa Fe pretty good at towing here is the genuine load assist kit. And what you get there is a set of springs that are upgraded, they're variable rate, and they deliver 50 kilos more in the tow ball download limit. So that goes up from 100 kilos standard to 150 with the kit. And you also get a ride quality benefit when you're not towing but you load the vehicle up because the variable rate on the springs really does accommodate extra loads very well. If you spend two and a half grand all up for that kit, you'll get the electronic brake controller as well. And what that allows you to do is tweak the response of the trailer brakes in relation to when you use the vehicle brakes. And that's kind of neat when you're right up here near the limit because I've found that it's good to make the brakes more responsive on the freeway and slightly less responsive when you're driving around town. And when you do that, it's just a twirl of the knob and you're not locked into some mechanical feedback loop that you would be in if you've got that older style of brake controller, which is just mechanical. All up though, I'd have to suggest this is a very serious test and the vehicle's just kicked it through the posts on the full. All right, so how about we talk about this absurd arms race playing out on Schittsville's roads at the moment. Three and a half ton tow limits are increasingly common and many of the utes offer that and so do the Land Cruiser and Patrol. So you can pick up a three and a half ton tow capacity vehicle no problem. And umpteen caravan retailers are going to happily sell you a van with a three and a half ton ATM. A great many people, you know, aspiring grey nomads or boaties mainly, they look at the tow specs, they're doing their planning and they go, okay, three and a half tons, so I'll aim for a caravan or a boat about that big. And to that, I would say, Time for a reality check on all of this stuff, okay? Because I think towing three and a half tons with a vehicle like a Land Cruiser that weighs 2.7 tons, that's in the case of the Land Cruiser, or just 2.3 in the case of something like a Ranger Wild Track, which is another hugely popular tow platform, towing three and a half tons with vehicles such as this is nuts. It's clinically nuts. If you jam a three and a half ton trailer behind a Land Cruiser Sahara, which is a very popular choice for the well-heeled grey nomad, once you account for the 350 kilos of download on the tow ball, which is part of the GVM limit, you are left with just 260 kilos of payload capacity in the vehicle before you blow the GVM limit. This is a vehicle with eight friggin' seats, okay? Like, that's 260 kilos maximum for the people, any equipment or luggage in the vehicle, and any accessories you fit. So, 
two fat bastards, a bull bar, a roof rack, a tow bar, and you're pretty much overloaded. And a lot of people don't consider that. If you do the same thing, okay, with a range of wild track, and I have lost count of the number of people planning exactly this, just paraphrasing the emails I get, they go like this. Mate, I can't afford a cruiser, but I need to throw, tow, and throw, probably, if I do it. I need to tow 3.5 tonnes. How about a ranger? Well, I'd suggest that's allowed. But if you do this in a range of wild track, you'll need to limit yourself to just 222 kilos of payload in the vehicle. <laughs> Fat bastards, accessories, tow bar, bull bar, luggage, equipment, stuff like that, not to exceed 222 kilos in total. Knock yourself out with that assignment. Three and a half tonne tow capacity on a Ranger, or a BT-50, whatever, a bunch of the Utes offer three and a half tonnes. It's a marketing gimmick. It's definitely not advice about what comprises a really good idea out there in the real world. 222 kilos of payload. If you exceed that, your wild track will be over its gross combination mass limit. And I'd suggest that's completely unworkable. 222 kilos of payload. Like, you're going to tow something so heavy that the ute has to be almost completely empty for your entire 16,000 kilometre circum Schittsville navigation. Good luck with that. Even if you load up that three and a half ton trailer, okay, and you manage to comply with all the weights and measures, the elephant in the room is safety. And by that, I mean danger, because it's just not safe to pull a three and a half ton pendulum behind a 2.3 ton vehicle. It's unsafe, no matter how legal it may be, if you conform to that ridiculously unworkable payload limitation. If you think doing this is a good idea, please don't breed or vote because we're all stocked up on morons. Hashtag Australia. If the trailer being towed is heavier than the vehicle towing it, in my view, this is a very bad situation indeed, potentially. The Santa Fe has a 2,000 kilo tow limit and a curb weight of 1,995 kilos. So trailer equals vehicle kind of thing. In my estimation, the powertrain of that vehicle could certainly handle more weight than that. And I say this because that test that we did was quite a severe climb on a really hot Schittsville summer day. And the vehicle just ate that climb and the temperature gauge never even budged. Never once felt like a strain, okay? So the powertrain was not apparently close to its limit, at least in terms of performance. Of course, one cannot know about the torque limitations of various powertrain components. I mean, this kind of data is typically not accessible to mortals like us outside the company. I'm not sure about the low profile tyres either. Ultimately, I suspect they're a bit of a limitation on the download, which is kind of proportional to tow capacity if you want to ensure dynamic stability. And trust me on this, you definitely do want to ensure that. So. There's something unknown limiting the Santa Fe to two tonnes of tow capacity, okay? We just don't know what it is, but we know what the limit is. The GVM on a Santa Fe is 2.6 tonnes, so hypothetically with a driveline and or tyre upgrade, it might be possible to roll out something like a Santa Fe or its cousin Sorrento with a 2.5 tonne tow limit. And who knows, they might do that in the future, and I'm thinking that might work. Potentially. But I really do believe that upping the ante to something like three tonnes would be rather a bad idea, even if the powertrain endurance and or tyre loads could be managed. Simply because the pendulum is getting a bit heavy at that point, and I think you'd agree. Call me old-fashioned on this, but I happen to think two tonnes is a pretty heavy trailer. Like, What's the point getting away from it all, right, if you're actually taking it all with you? I mean, three and a half tonnes comprises it all for most of us, surely. Anyway, have you seen the price of these Starship Enterprise caravans? In any case, the three and a half tonne ones? You could accommodate yourself in five-star luxury for, I don't know, a year, or the best part thereof, 
and not once take a dump in a Laminex box located between the dining room and the bedroom. So there's that. Live in the grey nomad dream, yes. Three steps between the dining room and cracking one off, you know, backing one out in an acoustically transparent echo chamber, hopefully with guests still sitting around the table. <laughs> yes, I ask you, does life actually get any better than that? In any case, I never, never want to find myself up the pointy end of an out-of-control horizontal friggin' pendulum, some sort of mad physics experiment at 100 k's an hour out there on the highway, caught on some third-party dash cam in perpetuity. I've been on the network news many times, and trust me on this, it's just not that worthwhile. <laughs>